I don't know if um, the country of Albania has ever been discussed on 100 Honey Street. I suspect that most of us know very little about it. I certainly know very little about it. It's sort of one of those hidden kind of mysterious countries. And so, um, except for Mother Teresa, except for Mother Teresa, who is Albania's most famous, famous uh, export for sure. But um, someone who is living there and working there and has done so for the last 15 years is David Penoyer. And he's come our way to talk about Albania in general terms and also about our terrific ministry called Global Christian Center Ministries that he founded a number of years ago. Welcome, David. Thank you very much. You're yeah, actually I, Canadian. Yes, I'm Canadian. You're Canadian, uh, struggling to learn Albanian. Uh, they, or have you given up? I've given up. <laughs> <laughs> I've got kids and my wife, they'd all know it. So. Yeah, uh, I understand that. I, when I lived in Israel, uh, my, my wife and kids were terrific. I was the slow coach. Nevertheless, give us a little history lesson. Albania is a country of mystery for most people. Just give us a little overview. First of all, most people don't even know where it is. Yeah. It's right across the Adriatic Sea from the heel of Italy. On the south we have Greece, on the east Macedonia, and on the north the former Yugoslavia. Um, Albania was under a dictator for over 40 years. He was a wicked man. What He'd, was his name? Enver Hoxha. He would put you in jail for the least little thing. Uh, his idea was to keep the people poor, keep them scared, and then he could control them. In the early 60s, he stood up and he announced that he had killed God and that he was the one to be revered. No religion was allowed to be practiced and they became the first atheistic nation in the world. Uh, they did have a relationship with Russia. He broke that off. Then he had a relationship with China. He broke that off and then he was an island to himself. Very closed country. And when, when was he deposed? Well, he died in... 80, the mid 80s. Uh, um, so he died in power? Yes, he died in power. The Communist Party took over at that point, and then they overthrew the Communist Party in 1991. And now, when, in 99, when the Kosovo crisis uh, erupted, how did that impact Albania? Oh, well, Kosovo was part of Albania, yeah. or they're all Albanians, right. and but they're much, they're well off compared to Albanians. But they all came down; they're fleeing the country. Right. We that's where we really started ministering to uh, the Kosovars. Is during that time we had uh, we looked after over two thousand of them on a regular basis. We had a bakery. We provided bread for them every day. We provided food and clothing, their basic needs for over. 2,000 people and it was a, an opportunity for our people to give even though they were poor they gave of, out of their poorness mm. to help their brothers from Kosovo. Mm. Where spiritually was the country left with the fall of communism, uh, no longer a dictator wanting to be revered? Spiritually where is the country? Well uh, officially they're 70 percent Muslim 20% Orthodox, 10% Catholic. Uh, then, but most of them practicing were atheistic. Uh, they, they weren't allowed to practice any religion. And so they, uh, if they had any faith, they kept it underground. Your wife is a former Muslim. Yes, she's from a Muslim home. A lot of the Muslims are, maybe I shouldn't say this, but they're like Christians in Canada in name only, okay? Yeah, yeah there's a... There's a, a secularism that yeah. uh, pervades most religious states wherever you go, including Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have um, by far the majority of Israelis are secular. What um, ever prompted you to get involved in Albania? I mean, you were involved in, in, in ministries here in Canada. Yes. When, when did it kind of spark? Albania is where we need to go. Well, I'd gone through a very traumatic time in my life, and uh, I was waiting for God's guidance. And a friend of mine, Keith Parks, mm -hmm. uh, came back from a conference in Albania, uh, or in uh, Europe, and he said, "David, there's some people in Albania that need you." <laughs> and so I said, "Where's Albania?" Within six weeks, I was over. I spent a couple months. I saw the need there. I came back, uh, reorganized, and went back to Albania and started from scratch. Now you started in a bar. Yeah. Well, for, I started teaching uh, English in a, to 11 and 12 year olds in a little school. Mm -hmm. And then after a period of time, I thought, well, you know, God, <laughs> I'm not called to teach English. That was my worst subject in school. Um, so if you Doesn't want, God have a sense yeah, of humor? Yeah, he sure does. <laughs> if you want me to be here, you know, I'm going to do something different. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start a church. So we started the church in September 96. We started in a little bar. We First service, we had 73, 76 people. It's been a while now. You moved um, to a pool hall. Yes, we moved to a pool hall. With how many? That, with uh, over 70 at that point, but close to 100, I guess. And then a warehouse. Uh, well, 
well, no, then we moved to another pl uh, another place before the warehouse um, because in the pool hall, that's when uh, the Civil War took place and the police and the army took off their uniforms, went home and hid, and it was complete bedlam anarchy and so it was we had too many interruptions from the neighborhood kids there was too many problems so we moved a couple blocks away to a did you face any opposition to establishing this church? No, not to uh, establishing it. People, when I first got there, were very open. Thank you for coming to teach us about God. We've not had any teaching about God. But since 9-11, uh, the opposition has become very strong. Um, the Muslims have become very strong, and, and uh, the, the others have, you know, they're, they're fighting it. <laughs> now, by May 2003, in spite of all of this, you had four churches yes. and over a thousand people. Yes, yeah, we growing we saw, in Christ. We saw a lot of people uh, come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And mm. then, a terrible thing happened. Yeah, there was some uh, suicides by young people uh, from a specific cult in Albania, and because all the rest, if you're not Catholic. Uh, Orthodox or Muslim, you're considered a cult. Right. We were all put in the same boat. And so the ne news media got a hold of this. And these people who committed suicide said uh, in notes, we're going to go to God or we're going to come. God's going to bring us back to life. Mm. And the media got a hold of it and started a campaign of fear across the country. Don't send your kids to church. Don't go to church yourself. Uh, they're going to teach you how to commit suicide. And our attendance dropped from over a thousand to about 150. Uh, it was terrible. It was really uh, devastating. We closed down two of our churches. We gave one of our churches away to another group. Because we were such so big and such high profile, uh, we were the brunt of a lot of attacks. And so we're not there to build our kingdom. We're there to build the kingdom of God. So we gave our church to another group so that they could carry it on um, and then we brought everything back down to the one church and we've started again growing and we're, we've got two churches now and so we're back on the, the now it takes a long time for uh, scare tactics like that to die down yes are people still a little bit nervous just this last year we're starting to see people that used to come start coming back we've been there we've proven ourselves you know and we're there to love people. Now, uh, you're, you're doing a number of things, and I, I was I was looking at your at your material here, with your Life Outreach Center, and um, it's a, very holistic. Yeah, really. Um, you, you're teaching English computer classes, uh, giving out food and clothing, uh, teaching the Bible, of course, feeding programs for poor children. You've got a bakery, a hair salon, a hamburger shop, digging wells, starting house churches, uh, two worship CDs, a farm project. Um, what part of their life are you not touching <laughs> would be my question. There are so many <clears throat> needs there. Yeah. And but we believe that God has called us to show forth his mercy to the world. And that doesn't mean just preaching Sunday after Sunday. That means ministering to the needs of the whole man. So we have a, a combination. Some people are just there to minister to the humanitarian needs. Some are just there to have church. We feel that we've got a balance where people can be ministered in the whole man, body, soul, and spirit. I and you're reaching them where they are. You're yes. not asking them to come to a building once a week. Yeah, we have a building, but we're ministering to where they are. And there's, there's so many needs. Al Albania is the poorest country in Europe, or at least was it up until a couple of years ago. Um, the people are so poor. Mm. And 80% uh, want to get out of Albania. They just, they're looking for something. No, Jesus is I, I ran into something in, in your, in your uh, material here that I've never seen before. Uh, feeding programs, yes. Orphan programs, yes. Regu but then you got regular orphan and law enforcement orphan. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by a regular orphan and what do you mean by a law enforcement well, orphan? Orphans uh, in Albania have a little bit bigger meaning than we do here. They're either uh, both parents are, uh, are dead or they're abandoned by their parents or one of their parents are dead. And so uh, we, we ministered to orphans. That started because the Muslims were starting to take kids away from our church because they were orphans and giving them money and giving them food. So we started a program to minister to them. But we, uh, God opened the door for us to minister to the police. Uh, we've, we do police training. Uh, we have Christian policemen from North America, England come and we, we train the police there. And out of that grew uh, this orphan ministry. 
in Albania over within a short period of time over 200 police were killed uh, in action. It, there, more police are killed per capita in Albania than anywhere else in the world. Is that because of crime? Yeah, because well, desperate beca be people. Yeah, because of the uh, uh, civil war, because of the. Uh, people being suppressed for so long and then when it, they have an outlet it, it, it just explodes and so there's uh, a lot of police were killed so we're looking after some of the police orphans um, and helping them as we do with the other orphans.